Welcome to powder making class. I'm Annette Julie and today we are continuing to work on our basic kimono draft. Please watch part one. We are on part two and we already have copied off our basic back and front bodice and we pivoted the shoulder dart into the armhole and then we drew long dart legs up to the apex past the dart tip, we do a slash line into our armhole. So we're going to start with the back and I have a large piece of paper, pattern making paper, that I can print my back and front on. I'm going to go ahead and draw a grain line, always starting with the grain line. I'm going to go ahead and place my back match it to the grain line now we're going to go ahead and trace it off but at the low point of the shoulder, we're going to raise that up a quarter of an inch. So go ahead and start tracing it off. You can use a ruler against any short uh, little seams that you might have that are straight. That works out nice. But down here it's curved. So I have to let my writing implement go ahead and follow that line. Actually, it was a crease in my table. Let me move that over. There we go. Now let's go ahead and copy off our armhole. Off the offer a neckline. And our shoulder. And we have removed that shoulder dart. Nice clean shoulder. If you want to bring the notches into the armhole, you can, but we're drawing a completely different armhole. If you want to put them in there just so you know it's the back, because you have a double notch, feel free to just bring them out. But we're not going to be using them later. Check and see that you've copied everything. Look, there's a little corner. I need to connect that corner. Now let's go ahead and mark off the dart. There's the tip right there. got that dart in there. And I've copied off the hole back with the manipulation. Now I'm going to come to the shoulder and raise this one quarter of an inch. Okay, and I've left a lot of paper so I can go out and develop uh, the, the back. So now we're going to go ahead and apply our sleeve length. But what we're going to do is from our new shoulder. So we've lifted our shoulder up a quarter and connect it back to the neckline. Okay, at zero. And you've gone up that one quarter of an inch. Now from that one quarter of an inch, we're going to bring a line straight out. And this is going to be a nice long line and you can make this the sleeve length that you want but I prefer 
22 or 23 inches. So here, uh, I'm going to make it at 23. Then that way you can always shorten it. Or add some shearing. Now, we're at the end of our sleeve. We're going to make our wrist opening. And my uh, wrist opening, I'm about eight and a half inches. So I can make this about four and a quarter. And I've squared this wrist opening down from this line right here. Now we're squaring another line from the bottom of the wrist. There we go. Now we're going to go connect a line to our base of our armhole. So I like to go out for a little bit and then come right to my armhole. I'm going to curve that a little bit. Later I'm going to go straight and then uh, right there at the end I'm going to curve that down. You can go ahead and grab yourself um, the curve ruler that you like to work with. I have about an inch squared and so it's a, a nice sleeve, nice wrist opening. There we go. Now this is the back. This is a nice long sleeve. I've made this like 24 inches, a little bit longer than I normally do. You can make this 22, 23, 24, any of those lengths. Okay, now you're gonna come out here. Um, I wanna say, we're gonna make like a line that comes out here, probably about two to two and a half inches. Go ahead and mark off those measurements. And we're going to, again, apply our curve ruler and blend that kimono sleeve. Okay, we're going to blend this into the underarm. And we're going to blend this down into our side seam. I use the two and a half inch mark. There's our new side seam. Now that's our back completed. So let's go ahead and cut that out. And we're going to use that top piece of paper for our front. Cutting out my center back. I just cut out the long shoulder and top of the sleeve seam. I'm cutting out my waist. A little mistake there. So if you ever make a little mistake, look, just put tape directly on top of it. You can put on the other side if you want to as well and then keep on cutting. Okay, now we get to do our under sleeve of our wrist, our sleeve here, right down here at the wrist. This is a straight line, and like I said, it doesn't need to be as long as mine. I wanted to do something a little bit more dramatic. You can do from the low point of the shoulder, 22, 23, 24, is like a standard industry now. So this is for a little bit of a taller person. Or if you want to end up scrunching up the sleeve. Okay, there's our back. Let's cut out the neckline and then we're ready to make the front. But we needed to do the back first for this draft. Okay, back. Now let's take our front 
there we have it. We haven't done any of the slashing yet on this. Let's go ahead and get this on our grain line. We're going to go ahead and copy off the front after we get our grain line. Match that to the center front. Make sure you have a lot of room to make the same matching sleeve length. Okay, let's go ahead and copy off our shoulder. And we're probably going to end up raising it to match the back, but we're going to start with our basic copy. Our neckline. <clears throat> and our little armhole, and we're going to stop there because the rest could be a slash and spread situation, okay? So copy off that much. Right down here, copy at your waist down to the dirt. There you go. Now, let's go ahead and already start slashing so we can get ready to match this to the back. We're going to slash up to the apex and I'm going to slash from the armhole this is where the uh, single notch is in the French armhole in the front armhole we're going to slash right from here right down to the apex as well now you don't need to cut that dart out unless you feel like you have to we can slash and push that dart underneath and you can see how small it goes that way and fix the point afterward right okay so we're going to put the back We're going to flip it over, okay, and we're going to put the back underneath our front, and we're going to match it on the side seam and do a little pivoting. So I'm going to tape down my front right now, move my weights, I'm going to put my back underneath there. You can sort of see it. It's not super clear, but we can sort of see it there. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to line up our shoulders. We're going to lift up that front shoulder, that one quarter of an inch, and we're going to line it up on our shoulders. So let's go ahead and lift it. Let's connect that back to the high point. This is on the front. This is going to be one of our matching points. Okay, so I see where that is in the back. I'm going to line it up directly on top of it. Great. Now, that's only one point to match. We've got to match the other one. We're going to start taking the, um, the front we're going to line up our grain lines and have them be parallel, they're, then they're parallel right now. But we're going to start taking the front and we're going to pivot that dart and we're going to close it so it ends up being that the side seams are making the same shape, okay? And we're going to put some fullness into the armhole. So this is pivoting and this is pivoting down and this looks pretty good. Right now, underneath it, that's making relatively the same shape. So I'm going to take this and blend this in and we're going to make our front armhole. I've got that there at the shoulder. And I can swing this out a little bit at the front to try to bring that side seam in a little bit more. So let me loosen this. There we go. We're going to cut that tape. Let me loosen. Let me see if I can swing this in a little bit more. Yeah, the best place to have it do it is right there at the top because it ends up being the same length. So I'm going to leave that on the center front grain line. Let's leave that alone. 
I've closed that, and right now there's a much smaller dart. This dart, if you have my block at home, this is now about an inch and a quarter. Go ahead, copy off that side seam, copy off that waist, go ahead and mark where the new dart is and we'll fix the bottom. And then now we're going to blend into the under seam of the kimono. I'm going to take my curve ruler and I'm going to blend right into it and I'm going to copy off the curve line that I already have and now this line is straight and then it goes into my one inch wrist where that's a little bit straight and I'm copying off the wrist now. Now we can copy off the length of the sleeve and back up to the shoulder, which we lifted that one quarter of an inch. Now free, feel free to give yourself a notch up here so you can line things up, and that's what we're going to do here in the armhole as well. Right here at this curious part, we're going to go ahead and do a set of notches. One, two, and three, and I'm going to transfer those to the back as well because this is our front. Let's go ahead and lift this up. Make sure you have your apex marked. There's my apex. I'm going to back that dart off an inch and draw my new dart legs. And we'll fold and redo that front waist. Look, that armhole doesn't count anymore, right? This is our front. You can go ahead and cut this out. Let's go ahead and cut out our shoulder. Length of our sleeve. Our wrist opening. And none of this has seam allowance. This is a draft, and you can end up using this as a basic block set for kimono for a project.